Okay, in this video, we are going to load and run forth on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now the fourth that we are going to run is McCrisp Forth by Matthias Koch, who has ported forth to many ARM microcontrollers. Now to load forth onto the microcontroller, we press and we hold down the push button on board the Pico, and then we plug in the USB cable. Now the Pico will look like a USB flash drive. Now we could drag and drop McCrisp Forth, which is a dot UF2 file into the flash drive, it will disappear and then it will become programmed into the microcontroller. Now we could get an FTDI module, which is a USB to serial module, jumpered for 3.3 volts, and we connect it up to UART0, which is pin 0 and 1 on the Pico board. Now we could gain access to the fourth operating system by plugging our USB connector into our computer and running TerraTerm at 115.2k baud. We'll get access to the fourth operating system with an OK prompt, and then we're ready to go. We're ready to program. Now I've added an LED onto the board, which you can see here. This is on GPIO pin 11, and I've taken some LEDs and I've, I've soldered on the resistor so it's easy to plug into the breadboard. I've added a push button, which you can see up here. This is on GPIO pin 22, and I've added a pot, which is connected up to ADC 0, so we could have 0 to 3.3 volts fed into the ADC0. So we can run some programs to activate the LED to uh, sense the push button on GPIO pin 22 and then we could read the pot, the voltage output from 0 to 3.3 volts. Okay, I have made a block diagram of the GPIO pins in the RP2040. Now there are 30 GPIO pins labeled 0 to 29. If you look at the IC diagram, you can see them labeled there, 0 to 29. Now in my diagram, I have them labeled 0 on the very right, all the way up to 29 on the very left. Now there are four GPIO pins that are not brought out to the perimeter headers on the Pico board. And I have them labeled with an asterisk, you can see them here. So it's pins 29, 25, 24, and 23 do not come out to the header pins on the Pico board. So pin 29 is hooked up to ADC3, analog to digital converter 3 and it's measuring V-SYST. Now that's the battery voltage, so you could actually measure your battery voltage if you're powering the Pico on batteries. So V-SYST will be, will be the battery voltage divided by 3. So when you take a reading on ADC3, multiply that by 3 and you'll get the battery voltage. Now pin 25 is the LED, the onboard LED that drives the LED to turn it on and off. 24, pin 24 is the V-bus. Now the V-bus is the, is the USB sense. This senses if you're powering the board through the USB port. It'll actually sense the 5 volts on the USB port. Pin 23 is a power supply, the switching power supply, the buck boost converter. And you can control it for power save mode, you, be, you drive it low. And for a PWM mode, you drive it high. Now in power save mode, it's the most efficient mode, but it has high ripple. So if you go to the other mode, PWM mode, where you drive it high, you, you get less ripple on the power supply. So that's all the GPIO pins. Now when you think of the pins, think of it in this direction. You'll see why later in the video. On the very right is GPIO pin 0, and on the very left is GPIO pin 29. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of the Raspberry Pi Pico board. Now if you look at the very top left-hand corner, you can see the USB connector. Now pin 1 is the 5 volts output, and that's connected to VBUS. Now this VBUS is put across this voltage divider which cuts it down to 3.3 volts and it's connected up to GPIO pin 24. So if you're running your Pico board off the USB connector, GPIO pin 24 will be high and you'll be able to detect that it's being powered by the USB connector. Now GPIO 23, which you can see here, is connected to pin 7 of the power supply, switching power supply chip, and has a pull down resistor, R8 as default, so it's set for power saving mode. Now if we drive a GPIO pin 23 high, we put it into PWM mode, which would give us a better ripple output, so we could control the modes of the, of the switching power supply. Now if you look up at the pin 5, you can see V-SYS, that's where we connect our batteries. Now if we go down, down to the bottom here, you can see a voltage divider with V-SYS. It's dividing the, uh, the battery's voltage by 3, and it's fed into the GPIO 29, which is ADC3. So we take that voltage and multiply it by 3, and that will give us our voltage of our batteries. So it's handy to have. And the last is the LED, which is over here, GPIO25. It's got a, it's got a current limiting resistor R3, which is feeding 
the LED on board. So those are the four pins that are not brought out to the perimeter of the Pico board. Okay, I have my Pico board powered up and it's connected to TerraTerm through my FTDI module. And if we go into TerraTerm, we go into Setup, we look at Serial Port. You can see I'm running on COM52. My baud rate is set for 115.2K with parity 8 and 1. And my transmit delay is 5 milliseconds per character and 90 milliseconds per line. Now if we go up to Setup and we look at Terminal, look at New Line Receive, I have it set to Auto. Now if I hit Return on my keyboard, I get an OK prompt. Now there's no reset button on the Pico board, but if I type reset, I'll actually reset the board. So it's reset. Now I'll show you some words that I have programmed in forth. We'll go dot pins. We'll look at the we'll look at the configuration of all the pins. So there's GPL pin 0 to 29. So on reset, they're all configured as inputs with pull downs. Now I could read all 30 GPL pins all at once. If I go dot inputs. So if you look at the very right, that's GPI pin 0, it's a 1. The next one to it is 1. That's the UART. So the UART pins are high. Now if you keep on going, you can see there's one another pin there that's high. That's pin 24. Now that's the VBUS sense because I'm powering the Pico through the USB port. So it's, it's, uh, it's seeing the 5 volts on the USB port, so it's giving a 1. Now, now bit 23 right here, it's 0. That's our buck boost switching control. So it's set for power save. So we could have a look at a 3.3 volt power supply and we'll look at the ripple. So there's the ripple when it's in power save mode. Now if I go pin 23 and I make it an output. Now if you look at the configuration, you can see pin 23 is an output. So now if I go pin 23 high, Now I'm forcing my buck boost converter into a PWM mode. So we'll have a look at the ripple now. So you can see the ripple is a lot lower. Now if we read the pins again, all of them, all GPAO pins, you can see now pin 23 is high and also pin 24 is high. And the two pins on the UART. So that's how we can monitor all of the GPIO pins. Okay, let's play around with the GPIO pin some more. So we'll do a reset and look at the pins. So with all inputs with pull downs. So we'll have a look at pin 11. We'll go 11, pull up. Now we'll have a look at the inputs. And you can see pin 11 is high because we pulled it up with a pull up resistor. So we could go pull up, we could go pull down. We could go float, so we go pin 11, float, so we'll be floating, and we'll have a look at the pins. You can see pin 11 is floating. So if I go print inputs, and do a carriage return, and a delay of 10 milliseconds, and do that many times, so it's going to print the inputs over and over again every 10 milliseconds. Many will put it into a like almost like a wild true loop. And it's floating, so I have a wire connected up to pin 11. When I touch it, the 60 hertz, the stray 60 hertz on my body will actually trigger pin 11. So you can see pin 11, it's toggling because I'm touching it. And the 60 hertz on my body, the stray 60 hertz, is triggering pin 11. So that's why you should always have either a pull up or pull down on the inputs of your microcontroller. Okay, we'll have a look at the pins. Now pin 25 is connected to the onboard LED. So right now it's configured as an input. So we'll go pin 25 and we'll make it an output. And have a look at the pins. So now if I go pin 25 high, the LED is on. If I go pin 25 low, LED is off. Now there's another word called outputs. And you can see the output is low because we turned it off. But if I go pin 25 high to turn on the LED and then go and then go look at the outputs. 
you can see pin 25 is high because the LED is on. Also have another word direction. So all the zeros mean inputs and the ones mean outputs. So you can see pin 25 is configured as an output. So we could read the inputs, the outputs, and the direction, all the GPIO pins all at once. And that's pretty handy. Okay, so let's have a look at the analog to digital converter. And I have my pot connected up to ADC0. So I'm feeding 0 to 3.3 volts into ADC0. So we'll select it. So we'll select A0. And we'll do question mark ADC and print it. And there's a 4095, so she's looking at 3.3 volts. So we'll do a continuous read. So I'll write a little script. So go ADC, print it, do a carriage return. And we'll do that every 10 milliseconds and do that many times. So there she is. So now if I adjust the pot, we could see the values change. So I could take it down. So we're going towards zero. And that's at the very end. So we're getting we're getting values there. I think it's a, a noisy power supply. So we'll take it back up to 3.3 volts. Now I'll hit any key to stop. Now if I go question mark volts. Here's your 3.3 volts. So now we'll do a continuous read. So we'll go question mark volts. And we'll do that carriage return. 10 millisecond delay. And do that many times. So there's our volts, 3.299. So it's a 3.3 volts. And I'll take it down. 2 volts, 1 volt half a volt. That's at the very end. It'll take it back up to 3.3. And I can hit any key. Now the temperature sensor internally to the microcontroller is on ADC4. So I go select A4 and go question mark temp. I got 20.023 degrees. So if I go question mark temp, carriage return, 10 milliseconds, do that many. That's my temperature. Now I'll spray it with some cold spray. See it's coming down. Now she'll warm back up. We'll let it warm back up. She'll come up to room temperature. So that's how we can read our ADC using fourth, the fourth programming language. Okay, so that's my little introduction on how to run fourth on your Raspberry Pi Pico. And I have a little program running here that toggles my LED when I press my push button. And it's pretty reliable. So I have code to toggle the LED and code for debouncing the switch. So if you want to run Fourth on your Raspberry Pi Pico, go online, search for McCrisp Fourth under sourceforge.net, download the file, and then you could run Fourth on your Raspberry Pi Pico.